do a video on paintbrushes. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me my go-to brush and things like that and what paintbrushes I use for water-based and what paintbrushes I use for oil-based. Um, so I've got a, a wide selection of brushes to be honest. Synthetic and pure bristle. Um, these are Hamilton. And on the box, on the pure bristle, it says, for a great finish with solvent based paints. And on the synthetic, it says, uh, great finish with water based paints. Now, I wouldn't use the synthetic for oil based whatsoever. They are only for water based. The water just runs off the synthetic. Um, bristles, put them near oil and it will just cling to it. Now, the pure bristle, although it says only for oil based paints, they're actually perfect for water based paints. Um, pure bristle brush has been used with water based paints for years. Um, I think the first paint brush was 300 BC, made from uh, pig hair, badger hair, things like that. So it's always been used for water-based. Synthetic, a, a more of a modern brush. Uh, again, they're real. They're okay for water-based paints, but I find the uh, ends of the bristles, sorry, the ends of the, the well, bristle on the nylon. It's just not fine enough and it's not tapered like natural hair and you just can't get that fine finish that you're looking for sometimes. Um, so what I usually do anyway is I buy a box of pure bristle brushes and they tend to go into my water based paints emulsions first um, and what that does it helps break them in and it helps wear, wear them down a little bit so then you can put them in your oil based paints and you don't really get any hairs coming out of them um, and they're just a lot nicer to work with because they've been broken a bit so what I'll do is I'll show you some close ups of these brushes I open a box, I tend to just to undo all the plastic and they get put in the toolbox. Um, but if I'm going to use one, I can use the plastic off and then just check it over really, give it a few knocks about on the bristles and then give it a bang on the palm of your hand. And what this does, if there's any loose bristles, it brings them to the surface. And to be honest, there's no loose bristles in that one. That's not too bad at all, that. Um, yeah. So I'd go through all my brushes and do that when I'm going to use them. There's one. I mean, you're not always going to get it. It depends how well the brush has been made. Because um, every brush is different. They've got a life of their own brushes, basically. Um, you either get a good one or a bad one. And if you get a bad one, just use it for something else, something rubbish, or you know, chuck it away. Like. Yeah, pretty good, that match. Right. Anyway, they're the uh, pure bristle nice set of brushes then and I tend to like these because they're a nice wooden handle there's no varnish on them there's no paint on them because they tend to kind of split and come off over time so the, the rubbish uh, plastic handles pretty good um, again there's lots and lots of paint brushes out there you need to find a paint brush that suits you um, I mean, I find these are just perfect. They're a reasonable price for what you pay. Um, 
you go through brushes quite a lot. They wear down. I mean, this set of brushes, they might last me 12 months. They might last me six months. It depends how much work you're doing within the year um, and what paint you're using, what surface you're putting it on and things like that. Like I say, usually what I do is when I've used them in water-based paints like emulsion, then we'll go into the glosses again, water-based glosses and also the oil glosses because um, they just make such a better brush. Right, let's have a look at these synthetic. Now, when I first started serving my apprenticeship and even working with my dad, we just never used synthetic brushes. They just weren't there. Uh, I've worked for some big companies and we didn't use synthetic brushes. Now, they are okay. You know, you've got the same handle, same stock. It's just the, the um, filaments and nylon. Now, you're not going to get the same hers coming out of nylon like you do with the pure bristle. When you bang them, you'll get nothing. They're, they're, they're pretty good for that. Um, and they look nice. They really do, but the em them ends are just straight end. Now, an end on a, a natural hair splits like that, and it, it is so fine, it's unbelievable. Um, they call it tapered. Again, these synthetic, they're nice sometimes for cutting in colours, emulsion when you're doing feature walls, they're so, they leave a nice straight edge. These do as well, but they tend to wear down sometimes. And to get into corners, they can be a bit difficult. So you have to use a smaller brush to tuck in the corner and then you can carry on doing your cutting in. But I still like them. Um, a few issues with these, if you allow your bristles to overshoot something, it just sprays the paint off. It will spray whatever's next to you. These are just more forgiving. They're not as um, flicky as these. These are more, they've got more spring in them. Uh, now, what I'll do in my toolbox here, I've got brushes that I use all the time some synthetic and the quite old ones really because they do last a long time but they also have a lot of problems with them now these are the uh, these are my pure bristle I'll just put them in there for a minute and these are some of my synthetic brushes Now, that was the lid falling off the box. Anyway, one of my best synthetic brushes that I like is my three inch. Um, and I do like it for cutting in, well, sorry, for doing ceilings, uh, big areas, you know, if you've got a big coving to do, it's a nice brush to use with the water-based paint. It does flow off the bristle, the filaments, a lot easier. Um, having said that, it's it's kind of, all the bristles are all bent on the front of it and things like that, you know. Um, it's not as neat as I'd like it to be. Um, and again, going down the line on some of these brushes, the stock is fattening up in that one. It's difficult to clean them out because when you're washing them out and things like that in water, you need to give the stock a good bang, you know. And what that tends to do is start um, bending the bristles, sorry, bending the filaments of the nylon. So as soon as the filaments start bending, they kind of memorise that and you can't get them back and they never sit back 
to like a nice brush when you first bought it. I mean, when you look at them too, that's that's how you want them all the time near enough, and they end up going a bit like this. Even worse, I mean, that's another one. Ruined, to be honest, I can't use them for anything. In fact, I do, I tell a lie, I use them for dusting dirty corners out and things like that, and gutters. Um, again, water-based glosses, you can't use that on water-based gloss because it's, it's no good anymore. So you then you have to go and buy new ones constantly. So I've completely fell out with synthetic brushes. Right, going on to me pure bristle. Now, I've had these a couple of months now and I've been using them in my water-based paints. Um, and they've worn in a bit, you know, some of the hairs have come out, granted, you have to pick them out, can be a bit of a pain, but in the end, you end up with a really nice brush um, that I just like using for water-based and oil-based paints. You know, let's take a two inch, that's a new two inch, that's my old one. Oh, you know, a couple of months old. The bristles are so just nice, you know. Again, that's a one and a half inch, and the bristles are just lovely on it. Um, now, it's true that water-based paint clings to natural hair a bit more than synthetic, and it does. It can gather in the stock a little bit, but. That's not a problem because you just wipe it on the side of your paint pot, take it over there, carry on. When it builds up a little bit, wipe it on the side of your pot, carry on. It outweighs the problems with synthetic brushes. So personally, I've gone from pure bristle to trying synthetic brushes and I've gone back to pure bristle because I was running out of oil, nice oil brushes because I've stopped using pure bristle in water-based paints. So I've gone straight back to pure bristle and I'll be sticking with pure bristle. Uh, you know, some other brushes that are pure bristle, paper hanging brush, you know, nice pure bristle that is. And the reason it's pure bristle is because it's a lot softer than a nylon. You know, you don't want to be putting a nylon brush near some 50, 60 pound roll of paper. So, nice soft brush. Um, <laughs> these are just some other brushes I've got. Um, that's a softener. And you use that for marbling, wood graining. You know, that's actually badger hair. So, uh, um, this is another one. And this is horse hair, uh, that's called a flogger. And again, I use that in the uh, marbling and wood graining. Um, um, this is called a stippler. And you use that for certain paint effects, um, like rag rolling. You brush your paint on the surface and then use the stippler to get rid of any brush marks within it to make an even surface before you rag roll. Um, over time I'll be showing you some of these special paint effects that you can actually do. Wood graining, marbling, uh, rag rolling, things like that, sign writing. So yeah. So what I'll do now is I'll give you a close closer look at some of these brushes. These are the uh, new ones, pure bristle. And um, these are the old ones, pure bristle. Now, granted, you get some bristles that, you know, they sit out, but as soon as that gets wet, it will sit back in and hold and it's nice. Yeah. Now, these are the synthetic, the new ones, look lovely. And they are okay. Um, they do cut in nice straight lines with colours. Uh, they are good for that. But... 
There you go. Synthetic. Absolutely useless. They're all right for a bit, but then they just sort of rubbish. Um, that's why I've gone back to me pure bristle because uh, they're just lovely and I like them. And when they've worn in a little bit, like these ones, once you know another week or two on those, and I'll be using those in my oil-based paints. You know, um, they wear down and. They don't just, you know, that needs a clean, but that's a cracking brush, that is. Um, same with that one. You know, needs a clean, but they always get a clean just before I start my work. Um, they just sit in water like that, and they're fine. See, that one's had a bit of a clean. But they're great brushes. Lovely to use. Right. Um, now, there is other special brushes. This is a flag brush, this. And you can see, don't get much call to use one of them. Um, for getting into any difficult areas when you can't actually get, you know, for, for the back of things. To be honest, they were mainly used to paint the old radiators so you could get through the metal bars and paint the backs. Right. There's also different types of, that's a lining fetch, um, loads of different types of fitches and sash brushes, all sorts of stuff. But basically, you can't beat your normal brushes, because if you want a, a brush like that, just wait till they wear down. You know, that's a one inch, but you can buy one and a half inches. Sorry, uh, uh, half an inch. So um, that's perfect for using to cut in sashes and things like that and you know when it wears down it gets even better uh, right yep that's the uh, badger hair and this is me flat brush now this brush is actually a mixture between pure bristle and synthetic filaments and I don't know if it can make it out um, but the actual pure bristle are all nice and straight and okay and the synthetic are all bending and twisting and turning rubbish so yeah I don't really like synthetic although having said that if I was doing a feature wall um, and using the colours to cut in down the corners you know I'd probably go for a synthetic um, because they are really good for cutting in straight lines with colours 